Welcome back to the second part of our SAP Tech Byte series on getting started with SQL Script and SAP HANA Cloud. In this video, we will continue our learning of SQL Script and explore user-defined functions. If you haven't viewed the first part of the series yet, I recommend going back and checking out part one as we will continue from where we left off. Let's get started. So welcome back. Um, again, we're going to pick up right where we left off from the last part of this series. And uh, we'll start with the third tutorial of the group, uh, working with Scalar user-defined functions. And then we'll continue on with the, the next tutorial, which is working with table user-defined functions. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and get started here. And we'll move this to the side. And the first thing we want to do is create a new folder, uh, which will house our functions. So uh, right click on source, say new folder, and, say, and then give the name as functions. Click OK. And next we're going to, once again, click view, and then the find command. And then we're, we want to uh, choose this create SAP HANA database artifact wizard. Uh, and I mentioned this last time in the, in the last videos, um, sometimes this, this path isn't correct. So we have to browse to the particular folder that we want. In this case, we want to change from the procedures folder to the functions folder. So if I uh, go ahead and drop here to source, and then I can select functions and click open, and then I have the right, uh, the right folder here. Uh, database version is HANA Cloud, uh, and this time we want to create a HDB function artifact. And we will give the name as get, get full name, and click create. Okay. So it says that our snippet has been created here, so we can go ahead and open this up. And next we're going to copy and paste the code in for this function. And I'm just going to go ahead and copy from the tutorial here, the entire thing, and we can talk about it. Uh, so I have a number of input parameters here uh, specified by the in keyword. So first name, middle name, last name, and employee ID. And then this returns us the full name. So basically it's saying, if there's a value for the middle name, then go ahead and concatenate the first, uh, if there is no value for the middle name, then just go ahead and concatenate the first and last name separate, separated by a comma. If there is a middle name, then we can actually, uh, we'll concatenate the first and last name, uh, first, middle, and last name separated by a comma. Uh, and then if the employee ID is, uh, uh, has a value, then we actually uh, uh, append that as well. Okay, so that's the basic, basic logic of this, this function. We can go ahead and save that. Now we want to use this function. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do is go back to our uh, procedure called get PO header data, which we created in the last um, Tech Bytes video and we're gonna modify it further. So instead of login name up here, we're going to change this to full name and let's make it an nvarchar256. And then in our select statement down here below, instead of pulling out the logon name, we're gonna call our function. So I'll go ahead and copy out the code here. So we'll get rid of this logon name here. And we're going to replace that with the name of our scalar function, get full name. Uh, so with scalar functions, um, scalar functions have the ability to accept um, any number of input parameters and they can actually return multiple scalar variables. In this case, our um, our scalar, scalar UDF uh, brings back a, only a single scalar variable, uh, but we can we can do multiple. Um, so we can, can we can call this function uh, in the field list here of a select statement, 
Um, or we could actually call this um, as a, a functional, uh, as a function within, uh, within our SQL script here. So we could just, just call it straight away, get function name, uh, sorry, get full name, passing the parameters, and then um, uh, have, the, have it assigned to a scalar variable. Uh, we have the option to do that. But again, in this case, we're just calling it in the field list here uh, to get that full name. Okay, uh, we can go ahead and save this, save, and we can do a deploy. And if we did everything correctly, hopefully we don't get any errors. Okay, and now we're gonna switch back to the database explorer, uh, where we're going to go to our procedure. Well, firstly, let's, uh, Let's look at the functions folder here. Uh, you can see that our, our function has been created successfully. Uh, we can look at the uh, we can look at the uh, the parameters here and the create statement uh, for that. Uh, let's go ahead and close that and look at procedures. And let's go and do a generate call statement. And we're going to go ahead and fire that off. So click run, and you can see now that our result set. Uh, is calling our our scalar UDF and actually um, uh, building out this full name for us on the fly. Okay, so that is that tutorial. Go ahead and close that, and we're going to go ahead and continue on with creating a table user defined function. So the next tutorial in the group creating table user defined functions. Um, we'll go ahead and create, once again, we'll use what we've learned and click view and find and use the HANA database artifact wizard. We're already in the right folder that we, that we want. Uh, let's choose HDB function and let's give it a name of get PO counts. Okay, we'll click create. And it has created the snippet for us. So get PO counts. And now we're going to, um, we're going to update the input parameter. And we're going to uh, supply an input parameter. I am F date. So importing parameter and the type is date. And we want to return a table. We'll copy this in here. A return a table that contains email address, full name, create count, change count, and combine count. Okay. Now we want to take the logic from our get PO header data procedure and put that in the body of our function here. So basically, essentially what we're doing is taking, taking our procedure and creating a, a, a table UDF um, in place of it. So let's go back to our procedure and we're going to copy out the body, the entire body, and put that into our function. Okay. We're going to make some modifications here because we want to incorporate our, our input parameter. Um, so let's go ahead and copy some things over here. So in this first select statement, I want to add to the where clause and say and month create date equal to the the month of the date that I'm passing in. Um, similarly, the next select statement, I want to do the same thing for the modified date uh, in the where clause. Okay. The next part here. So we're going to change the name of our um, of our 
output parameter here, we're going to actually make it a um, an interme another intermediate table variable. We'll simply remove um, the beginning of that, and we'll call it employee PO combined count. Now that is another implicit intermediate table variable. So it's going to hold our results, and we're going to do something else with it. Okay. Uh, we're going to add something to the select statement here. We're going to add email as a column. And we'll go ahead and remove the limit off the end here. And then finally, we're going to add a return select statement so that we can pass our, um, our results to our, um, our return parameter. So, uh, return select star from employee PO combined count. That looks good. So now we're just taking the results, we're doing a select from our intermediate table variable and then passing that out as the return parameter. Okay, if we did everything correctly, hopefully we did, um, we can go ahead and save this. And we'll do a deploy. It looks good. And then we'll go back to our, um, our database explorer and we'll go to our functions and we'll right click on the get, get PO counts and say generate select statement. So this, uh, this creates a, a basic select statement for us and then we can go ahead and pass uh, the input parameter. Let's, uh, Let's pass in a date that I know that there's there's rows for. Uh, and then we want to say limit three because we just want the top three. That looks good. And then we can go ahead and run this. So there we go. We get the results. So basically taking a procedure and modifying it into a table function. Again, a table function, a little bit different than a scalar function, where a table function can, can take on a number of input parameters, but it only ever returns exactly one table uh, as its output or its result. Um, so, so we can use the table, uh, the table UDFs to build some complex logic and then use this UDF, uh, this table UDF, um, within inner joins of other select statements and things like that. Um, so just a way to be able to put some complex logic together and then use them within other selects, uh, whereas you couldn't do that with, with calling a procedure. So that wraps up the second video of our SAP Tech Byte series on getting started with SQL Script and SAP HANA Cloud. So join us for our next video, part three, where we will focus our attention on user-defined libraries in SQL Script.